the tender come for make you answer. Retire for past be end Papa do ya sorry for it. Because we sense na nonsense if we no get you presents. And if we be Hello everybody and welcome again to our show. And as we all know today we'll be discoursing on gift and talent. And on the show we are having one of the sensational gospel music ministers in Sierra Leone. And it's nobody but Minister Judah Zubairo. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Welcome. So good to and be here. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. As we all know, we, we have a trended song around, which is Pray for Salon. And we decided to have Minister Judah Zubairo to tell us a little bit about the song and his gospel music career. So... Um, welcome once more to Thank the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So as I was telling you earlier, we are actually discoursing on gift and talent. And I okay. believe that this particular interview merged with the topic. Yeah. So I would love you to tell us a little bit about your how your gospel music career has been so far. How's the journey been? It's, it's been an interesting journey. It's been an awesome journey. You know, I started music at a very tender age. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would say I've always been doing music mm. because you know, both my parents are ministers mm. and they have a church that they are heading. So ever since I was a kid, I was a part of the choir mm -hmm. and I've been singing. I, I learned how to play instruments, you know, because if your dad is a pastor, at least as the song, course, you have to know, you, you understand. I understand that. <laughs> you have to be helping out in the church. So I learned how to play instrument, started singing. And, you know, from a very young age, I think around nine years, I started writing songs. Mm. Uh, you know, ever since I started writing songs and I started singing, you know, people used to love the songs that I do. Right, and right. people would always keep telling me, oh, I like this song, or oh, I'll write this song. And someone would say, now you write this song. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's been really interesting from then on. So it went on and on until about, about 16 years. Whilst I was 16 years, that's when I actually felt the sense of this actually being something that I was called to do. Okay. You know, when I was younger, it was just me liking to do music. Mm -hmm. You know, but then at about 16 years, I started having the sense that, okay, this seems like something that I've been called to do because mm -hmm. the, the feeling and the passion that I have for it and the, the impact that it's creating on people um, went a long way to signify that this is a calling from God. Okay. Because, you know, for us as Christians, we don't just do things like that. You know, we have to do things being led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And I felt like music for me, doing gospel music and leading worship, was something that God called me to do specifically in okay. life, okay. you know. So, so I accepted it. Right, so, so I, I, I just, I was just thinking, as you were saying, I was just thinking about people that always started from their tender age. Yes. But their situation might be different from yours. So, what can you say? Are people that are like born with it, if I could say, um, from a tender age, are, are, are they, are, are these things within them leading to a uh, life purpose as yours? Could you say everybody could, could be categorized in such a situation? Well, I think it, it varies from person to person because, you know, there are people who have different talents. Mm. You know, there are people who are not only talented or gifted in just one thing. Mm -hmm. They can do different things. I know a few people like that. You know, so for such people, it's actually a conflict in their minds yeah. as to which yeah. one yeah. thing should they focus on. Yeah. You know, so... It, 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 it might be easier for someone who has an understanding and a sense of purpose, like I think I did. I think I, I, at a very young age, I started having an understanding of what it means to actually have a sense of purpose. So I could link what God has blessed me with and say that, okay, this is what, why God gave me this gift. So upon all the other things that I could do or I could focus on with school and other things, I could talk very well, so I studied mass communication and all the other different things, I could specify that, no, you know, this is the one thing that God called me to do. So, for someone out there, you know, it, it depends on you as a person and your relationship with God. Because there are people who feel like they should just do anything to get money or to just get by. So, whatever works for them, they will just do. You know, so they don't ha actually have that sense of purpose. Because when it comes to purpose, it's not about making money. It's not about people liking you. It's not about only people appreciating what you're doing. It's about you being um, on the inside, um, positive, 
and you're accepting the fact that, okay, this, this is what God called me to do. So no matter the outcome, mm -hmm. if I'm making money or not, yeah, if I'm I, popular or not, I, this is what I'm I, going to do. So, so I was, I was um, I think, three episodes ago, third, episode three of my reality lab, I was talking, I was actually helping people out to discover purpose. Okay. And, and I made a statement that there's a difference between your work and your job. Okay. And now uh, you're a graduate. Yeah. You study mass communication. Yes. But you, you, what I've learned from what you told me a um, few years back, yeah. you have never applied for a job. Never. You have never. Because never. you actually had a sense of purpose. Exactly. So I have a few people out there that might be educated, land, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, are passed through the doors of university mm -hmm. and are thinking, I know that this is where God has called me to go. This, this is the pathway I mm. should go. But. You know, I don't have finance. I don't have money to take care of what exactly. So yeah, I need I to find a job first. What can you tell such person? Well, there, there are different levels and there are different shades to that question. Because mm -hmm. um, for me, mm -hmm. I took the decision without looking back. Mm -hmm. I was actually that um, I'm strong in mind and in heart enough to say that, okay, this is what God called me to do. I'm not going to do anything yes. else. I'm just going to focus on this. Mm -hmm. You know, so that amount of willpower and um, 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 persistence and conviction that I had was enough to sustain me to take the decision and also um, do what I'm supposed to do till now I'm not looking back. Mm -hmm. You know, so it might be different for someone else because mm -hmm. some people, you know, I will not just say now, okay, even if you studied in school, leave what you studied and focus on what yeah, you yeah. feel like you're supposed to do yeah. because some people maybe what they think that they're supposed to do is not actually what they're supposed to do that's one yes, thing yes. some people just want to do what they like doing yeah. you know some people like music mm -hmm. people, most people that i know mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just want to sing because they like, like singing it. they've yeah, seen okay. someone yeah, sing yeah. it's popular uh, they like the attention uh, so it's not necessarily their purpose mm -hmm. you know so some people might mistake their the advice and say okay well you know, I've just left school or left with your study and just go begin for the scene. And because it's not what God has called you to do, you will always feel empty. You will not be fulfilled. Yeah. If you are not making money, you feel like you're a failure. Yeah. You know, you feel like people don't appreciate what you're doing. And it's not because you took, um, um, you, you neglected your purpose. It's because you, you took a wrong decision. wrong decision. Because you didn't actually take time maturely to communicate with God and also check out your exactly strength you yes and weaknesses and able to point out that okay this is what god has called me to do and i'm going to do it all right, all right so the big to so the big question yes sir uh, we all know pray for salon is trending around the nation right now yes sir and it's blessing a lot of souls and yes, we would really want to know what is behind pray for salon but before we go to that point we love viewers to listen to this song pray for salon by minister judah Zubairu. We don't they cry for so long. Papa, do ya yagi we? We don't they pray so teddy day. The time don't come for make you answer. Tire for past be and do. Papa, do ya sorry for it? Because we sense the nonsense if we not get you presence, and if we been get track. We for don't fit for we self But we know able Now you capable For pull we pan this kulala The path you begin and the person Do ya we need the pen for don't we done the cry, hey. do ya just make the rain for them? Can help we love, so we go rise. Mm. Let we not suffer for the one them, where they pull the country with their hand. 
We lead us them, please guide them Make them do good things for make we stand For the land where we love We sweet alone song by a dear brother Thank i you. think that's a blessing when when i listened to the song personally the day it went out i i felt this this deep intimacy as in you you came from a place of mm. understanding mm. to to set up a prayer like this yes. for our dear nation yes. so i'd love to hear it's good to hear from the other smile yes exactly what 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 is it about pray for saloon where is the inspiration coming from what were you thinking did you just wake up one morning and you just say, I need to pray for Salon <laughs> and you just write a song or you, you came from a place where we want to know about that? I feel like my, my life experiences has led me to this song in a mm. certain way, mm. you know, because um, I always had this sense of responsibility towards Sierra Leone, you know, which, I, which I've, I've grown to realize that most people don't. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at even the everyday Sierra Leoneans, most people that I've related with, I'm not going to generalize, but most of the people that I've related with, most people just want to leave the country. Mm -hmm. Most people are saying, yeah. they ever better than I am, mm -hmm. or, you know, we don't tire, this country, those kind mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. But I've never had that feeling. I always had a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. towards this country that if change is going to occur, we have to effect the change. Mm -hmm. It has to start with me. We have to do something about it. Yeah. You know, so having that mindset, um, um, all through these years, I think it led me to this song because when I decided to do this song, it was purely based on inspiration. What first happened is 
like a month ago before I wrote the song, mm -hmm. I had a discussion with a set of people. They were telling me that, oh, maybe one of the things you could do, you could do a song for your country. And we just talked about it. It was fun. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. But based on my experiences, I don't just really write songs because of suggestions from mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or because it's a good mm -hmm. idea. I have to be inspired by God to do it. You know, so a month after, after, sorry, a friend of mine, we were also talking on the phone and the individual mentioned that, oh, you know, it would be really nice if you did a song for the country with you guys, because we're talking about how there are lots of Corona yeah, songs yeah, everyone is doing, yeah, Corona yeah, songs, yeah, okay. people are trying to sing, okay, you know, okay. and I was like, no, I'm not going to do a Corona mm -hmm. song. There's no need for it. Mm -hmm. There are tons of songs about Corona. Then we said, that, okay, well, a song about the country because Sierra Leone has been through a lot. And yeah, I was like, yes, yeah. that's true. There's a lot to talk about our country. Mm -hmm. We've experienced mm -hmm. different things. The war, Ebola, mm -hmm. even the everyday lives of Sierra mm -hmm. is an mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. that we need to discuss. You know, so I felt like this is something that I need to pay more attention to, mm -hmm. you know, because um, what we truly need to change the situation of Sierra Leone mm -hmm. are not the ideas, because mm -hmm. we all have conflicting ideas. Mm -hmm. If we were to sit down now and discuss what you think are the problems in Sierra Leone, we would have different of ideas. Course. What you think of is course. the problem will be different from mine, it will be different from someone yeah, else's. Yeah. But the only person that knows the problem is God, and he's the only person that holds the situation as well. But oftentimes we tend to neglect him. Mm -hmm. We tend to neglect his involvement mm -hmm. and his ability to remedy the situation in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, so I felt like it will be a good enough thing and something responsible enough for me to do to draw the attention of several unions back to God. To God. Because especially to in God. this situation of Corona, lots of people were trying to stay safe, mm -hmm. were trying to take necessary precautions. Mm -hmm. And even whilst we're doing all of that, we still don't really feel safe. You're always still feeling like, okay, I'm washing my hands, I'm wearing a mask. But people have been washing their hands and wearing a mask, but they're still getting affected by Corona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. what can actually make you have that total sense of being safe? And I felt like God is the only thing. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. The righteous yeah, run it into it and they are safe. You know, so I feel like it's important to draw people's attention to God. So first of all, have every Sierra Union take responsibility about what has been happening in the country and also recognize the, the, the fact that they need to change those situations and also draw our attention to pray to God personally. Another thing is all of our, um, I would say, religious gatherings are now ended the muslims can't meet christians can't pray all the other people we can't meet because no gatherings are allowed so most people are, might have forgotten the the importance of prayer you know so it, all of those things combined led me towards this song all right, all right. that that is very good i think from from what you said earlier the sense of purpose yeah it was it is actually felt yes. through the 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 inspiration behind yes, the song exactly and i think a lot of musicians should learn from this a lot of gifted people yeah. you might not be a musician you are talented in acting you're talented in different areas of your life you have to know that you you have to have a sense of purpose True. You, you, your attention should be to the one who delivered that to you because exactly you are you, you mentioned that you had a lot of suggestions yes in as much as they were important yes but you you, you we are not um led by exactly. their su suggestions yes but you, you, you your attention wasn't oh but but uh, as i was listening to the songs the song rather um i i realized that something which was which kept, which which caught my attention and i believe it might be significant okay. or it might be symbolic so okay. i decided i need to ask you okay there's this feel of acoustic there's this acoustic feel throughout the song yes which gives the song a cultural type of yes you know sensation it does. i don't know i don't know what is what is behind that <laughs> of course i'm an instrument in this, so course. i i i yes. that caught my attention interestingly so, musically minded people um, picked it up okay most of the people that i talk to that are actually musically inclined mm. they're all talking about the production the there's production something, the there's sound. something so the person that produces really did well mm. lots of the people even producers outside of the mm. country that mm. i sent the link to and mm. they listen they were always asking they're even forgetting about this what i signed Damn. they were saying the production there's mm. something mm. that's really amazing about mm. this and they really appreciated it mm -hmm. you know when i did the song like i said you know i didn't just want it to be another song mm. You know, I, did, I know that lots of people are now seated at home yeah, yeah. and what we need is a message, something that can catch the attention yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's not just a song that you listen and dance or just say, oh, this is nice music. We wanted to give the kind of production that will allow you the chance to pay attention to what the song is saying. So create the mood mm. 
that will draw your attention mm -hmm. and maintain mm -hmm. that attention mm -hmm. all through mm -hmm. the song yeah. so that you will listen because if you realize the song is quite easy to listen easy. to yeah, very and easy it's song. five minutes 26 seconds wow. it's not a short song but mm -hmm. when you listen to it it sounds short mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know because it's just mm -hmm. two verses mm -hmm. and two choruses because that's there it. are things within it that attract you to go deeper yes it, it, you, it, 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 it maintains it's your attention yes. and that was yes. all intentional because I discussed it back and forth with the producer, producer. which was Young Lee. Okay. You know, okay. but Young Lee is someone who is just known for producing the regular everyday know, music. Right? You know, know, so right. most people are surprised. Oh, Young Lee did this, and mm. I was like, yes, the man is a really amazing producer. <laughs> you know, so we discussed it good. back and forth, and then we arrived at what would be appropriate for the message and for the mood we wanted to set mm. for the music. So, so this is very wonderful because you actually you actually did some certain things intentional. Yeah. And and using. You know, uh, our lingua franca, which is um, Creole, which is our first language in Sierra Leone, was one wonderful thing yeah. I admired. Thank you. You know, um, you. <laughs> there's a statement you said that that we need the presence of God because we sense no, no nonsense. nonsense. If we not get you, if we not get present. Yes. And you also use this word kulala. Yes. You know, some of the some you. of the words <laughs> are just catching, and this, this is very inspirational. Yes, not sir. only to myself but i believe to every other person who is a musician or mm. an artist that is practicing, yes. practicing art to yes. let us capture our culture, culture. a serene yes. culture because throughout the song you understand that the culture of mm. is not missing mm. you feel it through yes. the song yes so i believe that it has been a blessing Thank to you. a lot of people so Thank how is the trend going how it's is it? been really amazing you know one of the things that i'm happy for is the fact that people actually paid attention to the words of mm, the song mm, because mm. it's not something that usually happens mm, nowadays yeah, because there are yeah. lots there are millions of songs going all around you know so for you to release a song and people actually memorize the words so, yeah. you know because i have people posting on facebook some lines yeah, some like lines, this one you yeah, mentioned and other lines then they would tag me up and, I've been seeing yes also the and same it's thing. really amazing i'm like okay this is really good because i wanted people to really listen to the words of the song and memorize it in a sense it, it was authentic even your vocals yes. was authentic it was not exactly it was not to to make to people distract. yes with with reefs and all that exactly skills. it was very authentic just singing so, the song clearly pronouncing the words clearly so that people will actually listen yeah, yeah. don't i didn't want to just do lots of singing and all of that i wanted people to just listen to the words keenly mm -hmm. and that was enough for me that's very yes. good. That's Thank very you. good. That's very good. Thank so, you. so people, this is Minister Judas Zubair. We've, yes, sir. we've heard here that, and we have talked a lot about his uh, song "Prefer Salon." Make sure you check on his YouTube channel, Judas Zubairu, and get a taste of the song. And I believe it will be a blessing to Amen. you. Amen. Finally, I want to ask the last question. Yes, sir. We were actually discussing differences between gift and talent, and of course, there are contradictions in different places, mm. different school of thought. So I'd love to have your own opinion. What do you think? Or do you think there's a difference between gift and talent? If no, or if you think there's a difference, what do you think are the differences? Wow. <laughs> the difference between gift and talent. Well, I think there is a difference. Mm -hmm. um, um, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Because I believe that to a certain extent, to a greater extent, mm -hmm. gifts are given to you. You know, and um, it's there regardless of what you do mm -hmm. or what you don't do. Okay. God thought it fits to have you come into this world and gave you a particular gift. Okay. Because even from the basic word, um, word of gift, if I take this now and I say, okay, this is a gift for you. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's um, um, something that is given and also something that is received from a particular person. Mm -hmm. And there's another um, scripture, I think it's Proverbs 18, 16, mm -hmm. where the Bible says a man's gift make it room for him mm -hmm. and i've expounded on that scripture before as to gifts referring to apart from what is given to you what you give to people mm -hmm. you know so coming to the difference between gifts and talent mm -hmm. i feel like gift is received talent is something you can also develop oh, 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 to an extent oh. i believe even though talent is also um, something you have naturally, naturally but there's an extent to which you can develop your talent okay. like there are um talented musicians and they are also gifted musicians. A talented musician could be someone who has really practiced, even though the person has the gift of music naturally. Mm -hmm. Because there are some people, even though they try as best as possible, they can never sing because they are tone deaf. You know, but mm -hmm. there are some talented musicians even that even apart from the fact that they are naturally endowed yeah, with the gift, yeah. but they've grown yeah, to the extent of working and developing that gift and it's now a talent that they will recognize you that this person is talented. Mm. So if you stand here and you're a dancer and you dance, even though you have naturally flexible muscles, 
like we all do, to mm -hmm. allow us to mm -hmm. be able to dance. Mm -hmm. But you took the extra efforts to actually practice yes. every day. You skill up. You know, so everyone knows you that, hey, this person, I get talents for dance. Not like you just grab the money and begin yeah. dance. Yeah. But Minister Judah Zubairu have already differentiated from his own opinion the, yes. The, yes, my opinion. opinion. <laughs> the concept of gift and talent. And I hope as we listen to the message as I am going to be giving with the differences between gift and talent, we'll learn with correspondent with yeah. what we have just listened from the testament testament of Minister Judah Zubaru and yes, the pray for Salon song. God bless you people.